Okay, so let's have a look at analysing a product. What do I actually want you to do? Uh, easiest way to do it is to describe the process with a product, and I've got my battery drill here. So we're going to talk through it in terms of uh, all of the design factors. But what do I need you want to do first? You need to get your factors flashcards, because remember, the answers are all on the back. Uh, all of the knowledge that you've got so far, so you can refer to those in this process. Next thing I want you to do, a little tiny illustration of your product, okay? Just a little pencil rendered uh, sketch like that is more than enough. Uh, and before we go into it too much, let's just have a look at this first one, the function. What is the function, the primary and secondary function of this product? So the primary function might well be to drill holes, uh, but it also might have a secondary function, it might be to drive screws into wood or the wall. So it's got more than one function. Now the easiest way to do this is to break it down into the features that we can identify on the product. So if we go round the product, I'll just identify what these features are. Uh, over here we've got a chuck. Okay, and that's the bit that holds the drill bit or the screwdriver bit. We have got uh, the speed controller here. So speed control. Okay, moving around. Well, we've got a, the main body of the uh, battery drill. So we'll have a look at the, the body of the battery drill. Moving around, we've got the handle part, which is where you would hold or grip the uh, battery drill. Moving around, we've got the battery down here. Very important part of any battery drill, without a battery. And then as we move around, got a lock here that allows the battery to come off and be removed, but around here we've got the trigger. Okay, so that's the first thing I want you to do. Go around your product and identify each of the features. Then we bring the cards back on. Well, I've already said that the primary function is to drill holes, secondary function is to um, drive screws, but you could find the function for each of the various uh, features that you've identified. So the function of the battery is to provide power for the motor, the function of the handle is to allow grip to be held, the function of the body to contain all the component parts robustly and durably, the function of the speed controller is so you can adjust the speed whether you want to drill fast or put screws in slowly, the function of the chuck uh, you could um, easily adjust the chuck to put uh, drill bits in or screwdriver bits in. It's also around here got a little torque, torque control so I can change how much I put screws in, what tension I put them in at. And the function of the trigger to allow various speed control. You'll find that it's got a slow start option. That might be very important if I'm trying to line up the head of a screwdriver with the head of a screw. So it's got various functions all the way around each of the features. Now let's go through ergonomics physiology. So I would say definitely with the trigger there's a requirement for the trigger to be able to be pulled by your 50th percentile to, to turn it on but you don't want it to go off accidentally in the bag. So when you put it up, so it's got some resistance to the trigger but physiology plays an important part in the trigger. Uh, let's go through uh, economics performance. Now this was actually a £40 drill, so it's relatively cheap. It came with two batteries, uh, which was a big selling point for me. I thought £40, two batteries, this is value for money. So I felt I had value for money with this product. However, it could be if it was a professional buying this drill that they would feel it was very cheap and wasn't able to do its job uh, effectively. You get a Makita, for example, for £200, which would do the same job, but it would do it so much better. Ergonomics is your big one. You've got so many ergonomic features around here. You've got the physiology of the chuck, being able to 
don't have the strength to physically open and close the chuck. It's not got a chuck key. So physiology is a big part of the chuck. Uh, the handle, well, anthropometrics, it's got to be the 50th percentile of person that can actually put their hand around it and reach for the trigger. So anthropometrics is really important. And the third area of ergonomics is psychology. Would I have bought this drill if it was pink? Well, if it was pink and £30 and there was one identical which was blue and £40, yeah, I would have bought the pink one. But wanting to buy it uh, is a feeling that you get when you look at the product. Uh, this is important for the battery, actually, because the battery looks large. If the battery looks too small from a psychological point of view, you might think it's not going to last as long, irrespective of the actual power on the battery or its life expectancy. So psychology, looking at a product, looking at whether it'll do its job before you've even purchased it, very important. Now the aesthetics appearance, easy to use the words to describe this. So we're looking for uh, the shape, I would say it's a pistol shape. The colour, I would say it's blue, black, it's got some silver on it, it's got some bright yellow. Now that's important because the from an aesthetic point of view this serves as a functional aspect so you can see the controls really easily okay uh, balance is an important one here whether or not it looks balanced well physically it is actually is very balanced because of the weight of the battery take that battery out and all of a sudden it's not balanced at all it doesn't work anywhere near as well without the weight of the battery so that's aesthetics Market. Who is this designed for? Well, I think predominantly the DIY enthusiast. I don't think it's a professional uh, drill bit by any means because it's just not robust enough. It's just not got the quality that a professional would be looking for. But I've been able to identify who would buy the product is going to have a huge influence. So identify who it is that's going to buy your product. The psychology we've already talked about in terms of the battery. Ergonomics, anthropometrics, well all over. The diameter of the handle fits the grip size of the hand. The physical size of the drill itself, it's only where you try to move your hand around to, to, to fit the various controls. So being able to change the direction with this con directional control switch whilst you're holding it with one hand is quite important. I can actually demonstrate that. I can flip it through whilst it's in my hand to change the direction of the drill. So, anthropometrics, does it fit the 50th percentile? What market research went into this? Well, obviously, before it was even designed, people were out on the streets carrying out questionnaires, surveying people, finding out whether or not the product could fit into the market at an upper end, a middle end, a lower end, whether or not the quality of the product was going to affect whether the person would want to buy it. So a lot of research went in before this product was even designed to finding out who was going to buy it. Environment sustainability. Is the product designed to be recycled? Well, the battery probably is. It can be taken apart and the lithium cells recycled for their precious metals. The body is injection molded it's a plastic it probably isn't easy to recycle that because it's actually uh, more than one material it's been made with the uh, silicon grip and the harder plastic of the main part of the body so uh, this is possibly going for landfill which makes it not sustainable so that's not so good can we take it apart and take out the metals from the motor possibly uh, metals from the chuck yeah probably could get most of the metal out of it but it would be labor intensive to do that so the mo most likely thing that this product has not been designed for sustainability eventually it will go for landfill it's a negative aspect of that product now aesthetics obviously is mostly about the appearance of a, a product its shape its form its color its texture its pattern its balance other senses are important and the touch is a sense that we can describe in terms of aesthetics. We want in a, a, a touch that's comfortable, gives security, makes you feel secure with the grip that you get whilst using it. So touch is a sense that you could look for uh, in terms of the tactile qualities of this product. Economic cost. Obviously 
this was mass produced so they were able to keep the price down but the company still had to invest a lot in tooling in the materials in the distribution in the marketing the advertising um it did it affect the overall cost they've kept it as low as possible i'm absolutely certain this is a very very cheap product your target market has to be identified that's going to determine the price that you put it in at and the quality of its performance so if it's designed for the DIYer, yeah, you can get away with a slightly lower quality product. If it's designed for a professional market, however, you've got to have top-notch quality and performance. And the environment location. It's going to probably be used, could be used on a building site, more than likely used in the home. Is it going to be used outside? Uh, is it going to be dropped? Does it need to be durable? Is it likely to be exposed to any weather conditions that could shorten its life expectancy? So whereabouts the product is going to be used can be discussed in terms of each of these features. So that is really how to analyse. What I'm going to do is I'll finish this off now. I'll put my notes down on each of these areas and I'll upload a, the finished example for you to download and have a look at uh, to see what I'm looking for from this activity. But I wanted to choose three products from the slides I've uploaded and analyse them fully. Okay.